Hi, this is Integza, and welcome to our establishment. What can I get you? A beer? Well, nice choice. I love a good beer, but I have to avoid them right now. I'm trying to stay in shape, you see? And if I shut one down right now, I'll have to run a good 10 minutes to compensate. And between you and me, running is not a preferable activity after drinking. Maybe weightlifting. That sounds better. And if you think about it, you're actually lifting weight while you drink just not a lot of it and actually the weight decreases with time because you're drinking it a regular glass of beer weighs about 220 grams when it's empty add beer to it and you get something like 620 grams not a lot of weight indeed to burn off the calories of a single beer you would need to lift and put the glass down 7000 times what that's a ridiculous amount of time to drink a beer can't i just try with a heavier Glass? Like metal? Or something? Actually, a glass made of metal would not be enough to burn off the calories of a single beer in the process of drinking it and in a normal amount of repetitions. You'd have to lift something like 20,000 kilograms. That's basically the weight of a train carriage. Yep, it's not easy staying in shape. I freaking freak freak hate tomatoes. Just the smell makes me want to vomit. And I think I know why. Tomatoes are a weird food. They are fruit that is in salads, but never in fruit salads. And if you can have tomato juice, why isn't ketchup a jam? Tomatoes are a fruit. Technically speaking. Just like, technically speaking, a watermelon is a berry. In reality, we eat tomatoes like a vegetable. Well, you do. I'm not touching this crap. Even if you like tomatoes, they are not worthy of your stomach. With only 11 calories, they are not the right choice to power yourself. A better contender is the salty and crunchy bacon. A single strip has 60 calories and a lot more flavor. But you need to be careful. Bacon is addictive and if you eat too much of it, you will get fat. Fat in your legs, thighs, ass, belly, back, neck, everywhere. Fat basically gets stored all around your body at the subcutaneous level. On average, humans spend about 2000 calories per day on basic body functions. Any intake above this is turned into fat. Fat that is stored in the form of adipose tissue. Small cells composed mainly of saturated lipids. Human fat is a pretty good way of storing energy. In the human body, we get that energy through the process of lipolysis, in which the triglycerides are broken down into three fatty acids and glycerol, a kind of sugar that our body turns easily into energy. To put things in perspective, 1 kilogram of human fat is the equivalent to a 5 kilogram dynamite explosion, energetically speaking. And practically too, because if Fight Club taught us anything, is that you can make dynamite using human fat. As the fat renders, the towel is flow to the surface, like in Boy Scouts. Once the towel hardens, you skim off a layer of glycerin. If you were to add nitric acid, you got nitroglycerin. If you were then to add sodium nitro, dash the sawdust. You got dynamite. Look, dynamite sounds like a cool thing to cook up and everything, but since I'm not a psychopathic terrorist with a dissociative identity disorder, I think I'll make something a bit safer. Did you notice how in the bucket there were two distinct elements? One is identified by Tyler as being glycerin, the other, in our case, will be biodiesel. That's right, today I will teach you how to use human fat to make biodiesel. To the kitchen! Hi. I'm Rosanna Pansino, and today we'll be making human diesel by the process of transesterification, in which we react fat with uh, alcohol. The ingredients you'll be needing are 1 kilogram of human fat. If you can't get human fat, it's probably because using human fat to make fuel is considered unethical, illegal, and according to one of the liposuction clinics I contacted, 
Disgusting. So you're better off using pig fat or whacking your neighbor. If you can't get pig fat, you can also use cooking oil. You will also need 200 milliliters of methanol, which is an alcohol, not a drinking kind though. If you drink it, you die. And then it's your neighbor's turn to convert you into fuel. 5 grams of sodium hydroxide, which is a fancy name for life, and a cup of water. Now, if you can't find water, use your own urine. Improvise. We are already using human fat. So don't be a puss. First, we need to melt the fat. A process also known as rendering. Put an iron pan on medium heat on the stove and add a cup of water. Then slowly add the crushed fat into the pan. After you added all the fat, let it render for about 2 hours. 2 hours? What? Really? Are you serious? I don't have time for this shit. After all the fat is melted, you need to filter it into a glass container to get as much oil as you can get. As a filter you can use a strainer, a sock, your brother's favorite t-shirt, your mother's underwear, a kimono. Be creative. Improvise, adapt, overcome! Once you have filtered all the oil, you need to keep it warm so the oil doesn't solidify into lard. The next step involves uh, dangerous chemicals. So be careful. Or don't. I don't care. I don't even know you. But don't forget to subscribe before you try the recipe. In this step we'll be mixing the 200 milliliters of methanol with the 5 grams of lye to produce methoxide. To be safe use a glass container to mix them, because the glass is chemically inert to the mixture. I think. After mixing the two chemicals, swirl the container until all the lye is dissolved in the methanol. To help you keep the rhythm, put on the four seasons of Vivaldi. It really helps you forget that you're dealing with dangerous chemicals that can burn you, blind you, knock you out, kill you, and... Once you're sure all the lye is dissolved, it's time to mix the methoxide with the oil. First, pour one liter of oil into the flask. If you couldn't get one liter of oil from the fat, you can use less, but you have to proportionally adjust the methoxide quantity. Second, pour the methoxide in and put the lid on. Now it's time to shake intensively. When you're done, take the lid off to release the pressure, put it back on and let the mixture sit until two layers are clearly formed. It should take a full day for that to happen. The bottom layer will be glycerin and waste from the reaction and the top layer will be biodiesel. Also, make a small hole on the lid of the container. The reaction builds up pressure that needs to be released. Believe me, I know that from experience. All that remains is to separate the glycerin from the biodiesel and test it in your car, which in case some of you don't know, needs to be a diesel car. Don't put diesel in your gasoline car, please! And that's it! Now you have biodiesel to use in your car. You can use it to travel, to get to work, so you don't get fired, again. Haha! <laughs> That's my boy. This is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified when the new video is out. Also, if you haven't posted anything on your social media for a while and people are beginning to think you're depressed, share this video and they'll know for sure. <laughs> I better get going. Thanks for watching. And until the next time, bye bye.